Welcome back. We are in section 5.5, .5, Recursive Counting. We will look at some elementary examples of recursive counting, and then some more challenging and interesting examples of recursive counting. So, so to begin, a couple cartoons. I like these. Recursion is a theme that we've seen already in the course, and we will continue to see it. We, we've seen recursive sequences, where one term of the sequence is defined in terms of previous terms of the sequence. Uh, here's another one I like. With recursive counting, we have some kind of a formula for some object we're counting, and in order to figure it out, I use a formula for counting fewer objects. We'll see. Here are some elementary examples. What is the formula for n factorial? So we want to express this recursively. Well, 5 factorial, for example, is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Oh, well, that's really just 5 times 4 factorial. So in general, n factorial is n times n minus 1 factorial. Now, there's a base case to consider, and that is this 0 factorial equals 1. A lot of people find this confusing, and, and it does seem weird. I, I agree. But here's a slight justification for it. How do you define 3 factorial? You could define it as 4 factorial divided by 4. And then 2 factorial is really just 3 factorial over 3. 1 factorial is 2 factorial over 2. And we conclude that 0 factorial is 1 factorial over 1. Oh, but of course, that just equals 1. So there is a, a small justification for perhaps why 0 factorial should be defined as 1. Here's another example. Let b sub n denote the number of bit strings of length n. What's the formula for b sub n? So we can do this directly. That's pretty straightforward. 1, 2, 3, n. I have n blanks to fill. These get filled with either zeros or ones, and uh, at every blank I have two choices. So my formula is 2 to the n. But what if I wanted to think about this recursively? What is a recursive formula? Here's how I think about it. Take that bit string up above and sort of uh, cut off the first element from the remaining n minus 1 elements. And now for that first bit, how many choices do I have? Well, that's 2. And for this, for the remaining n minus 1 elements, how many choices do I have? I don't want to write 2 to the n minus 1. I actually want to write it in terms of the formula. That's b sub n minus 1. And so there's our formula, there's our recursive formula for the number of bit strings of length n. Here's another example. Imagine n points where uh, every pair is connected by a line segment. By the way, that's called a complete graph on n vertices. Let s of n denote the number of segments. So for example, in this picture, s of 7 is 21. There are 21 line segments there. What is a recursive formula for s of n? Well, maybe a smaller example might help. Let's suppose I have four points and I connect all the points together. Okay, so there's a complete graph on four vertices. And then I'll draw a fifth, and I'll connect the fifth to the four that were there. One, two, three, four. So if I want to know how many edges, how many line segments are in this graph with five vertices, what I could do is remove all the edges connected to the one point and see, oh, I have a complete graph on four vertices there. So however many edges I have in my complete graph on four vertices, then I'll add in four more edges and I get the complete graph on five vertices. In general, if I have n points, n vertices, then I can count how many edges there are in n minus 1, and then add to that n minus 1. Kind of like I did for the graph on 5. I said that s of 5 was really the same thing as s of 4, but then I had to add 4 more edges in there. Recursion in counting. Let's take a look at some of our more standard counting formulas and see if those formulas can be expressed recursively. So permute. Uh, how about recursion for n permute r? A recursive formula for n permute r will be expressed in terms of 
Now look at this. The indices go down. That is the, the argument to this function. So in order to be expressed recursively, this is a little strange, right? Because I have two inputs, not just one. So one of those inputs, or both of those inputs, must decrease in order to find a recursive formula. How about a specific example? This will help. 20 permute 4. 20 permute 4, that tells us the number of ways to fill four blanks with distinct numbers from, well, we can just say 1 to 20. So, for example, uh, 5, 2, 17, 10. That's one particular way to do it. And in this case, with permute, order does count. So 5, 2, 17, 10 is different from 2, 5, 17, 10. So how many ways can you fill that first blank? 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, I have 20 choices, right? There's 20 different numbers I'm choosing from. So I have 20 choices for that. But then how many ways can you fill the three remaining blanks? One, two, three. So I've already filled in the first with some kind of a number there. For the three remaining, well, I don't have 20 numbers to choose from now. I only have 19 numbers to choose from because the first guy has already been used. And I don't have four blanks to fill. I only have three. So in fact, it's 19 permute three. Ah, so I've broken my problem up into two parts. Handle the first number and then look at the remaining numbers. So what is my recursive formula? It is 20 times 19 permute 3. So that's the recursion for this one particular number. What is it in general? You know, we'll argue inductively now, just by common sense. What do you think uh, n permute r is? And a good choice is n times n minus 1 permute r minus 1, just like we saw in the example above. How about a recursive formula for combinations? N choose R. 20 choose 4, again we'll argue by a specific example. 20 choose 4 is the number of four element subsets, 1, 2, 3, 4, with numbers drawn from, well, again we can say 1 to 20. And in this case, a set might look like 2, 5, 10, 17, like that. But I don't want to count order as being different. So 2, 5, 10, 17 is the same as 5, 2. Since order doesn't count, since order doesn't matter, then we often just choose to write it in uh, numerical order from least to greatest. Okay, so 20 choose 4, that's the number of four element subsets with numbers drawn from 1 through 20. Here is a great trick. It's a, kind of a, a standard way of getting a recursive formula. Break this counting up into two different cases. How many four-element subsets contain the number 1? And how many four-element subsets don't contain the number 1? So every subset has to be one of these, and these are two distinct ways of looking at it. So if I can figure out the answer to both of these, then I'll just add the results together. How about this first one? How many four-element subsets contain the number 1? Well, it has to contain a 1. I'll put a 1 there. And then the other 3, I'm free to choose. Well, that means I have 3 to choose, but from 19 numbers. So 19 choose 3. Check. Second question. How many 4-element subsets don't contain 1? Well, in this case now, I can fill all 4 blanks, but... I can't choose the number 1 to fill any of those blanks. So I have 19 choices, and I need to choose 4. So 19 choose 4. Check. And that's it. I've just written my recursive formula for 20 choose 4. Every set of four elements has to contain 1 or not contain 1. So 20 choose 4 is the same as 19 choose 3 plus 19 choose 4. All right, in general, what is my recursive formula? n minus 1 choose r minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose r. Bit strings of length n with no consecutive ones. Now, this isn't a standard counting formula, but it's an interesting question. What is the solution to this? How many bit strings are there of length n with no consecutive ones? And we can find a recursive formula for this. So let's give this a name. We'll call this b sub n. 
And what are some examples? So something like one, one, I've already screwed up. How about one, zero? I can't have any consecutive ones. One, zero, zero, I go for a little while. One, oh, but then I have to choose a zero. Maybe zero, one, zero, 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 one. Okay, there's an example. That's a bit string with no consecutive ones. I'm going to pause the video here for a little bit and say, you try to fill in these blanks. See if you can find a recursive formula for B sub n, and then start the video again when you are ready to check your work. All right, let's take a look. So the first bit is either a 0 or 1. Okay, It has to be one of those two cases. So those are the two cases that I will split my counting into. So how about this first case? If the first bit is 0, then there are how many ways to determine. Okay, so let me modify my previous example up above. I'll make the first bit zero. There we go. Um, well, my first bit is zero, so I've definitely chosen that. There's no other way to choose that. What about all the remaining bits? Well, the remaining bits can be anything, um, as long as they don't have consecutive ones, right? So the remaining part, b sub n minus one ways, I mean, there's only one way to start with a zero, but then there's b sub n minus one ways to fill in the remaining bits, b sub n minus one. The second part is trickier. All right, let me erase this, and I'll go back, and let's imagine that the first bit was actually a one. This is where it's tricky, because look at this. My second set of n minus one bits, it can't be just anything, because this first bit following the one cannot be a one, not one. Oh, well, I mean, when we're talking about bits, if it's not one, then what must it be? It must be a zero, All right? So I don't really have any choice on this second bit. But then, knowing that my second bit is a zero, that means that following that, I really can start with a 1 if I wish, because then I won't have any consecutive 1s. So what remains here? If I start with a 1, right, if I start with a 1, my second bit must be a 0. I have no choice. But then following that, for my n minus 2 bits, it can be any string so long as there are no consecutive 1s. And so we find that I have b sub n minus 2 ways to do this. What is the formula for b sub n? Here we go. b sub n is b sub n minus 1 plus b sub n minus 2. And that looks a little familiar, right? Maybe, do you remember the Fibonacci sequence? The Fibonacci sequence had the same kind of recursive relation. But let's be a little bit careful about some um, initial conditions. This is something I've been a little bit loose about. I haven't talked about it already, but now's the time to begin. Let's be really careful. What is b sub 1? Because I can't just do this recursively backwards, you know, getting smaller and smaller and smaller indices forever and ever, uh, I have to stop at some point. What is b sub 1? Well, the number of bit strings of length 1 with no consecutive 1s, uh, there's only one. I can have either a bit string of 0 or a bit string that has 1. Oops, I'll make that 2. <laughs> two ways to do that, of length 1 with no consecutive 1s. What about b sub 2? Well, I could have 0, 0, or 0, 1, or 1, 0, but I can't have 1, 1. So there are three ways to do that. So our initial conditions, or our base conditions, that is b sub 1 is 2, and b sub 2 is 3. Recursion in counting, let's look at tennis games. Currently, suppose a game is tied between players A and B. In tennis, you must win by two. So, for example, if the next eight winning points follow the pattern A wins and then B wins, we're back to a tie, and then A wins a point and then B wins a point, we're back to a tie, and then B wins a point and then A wins a point, back to a tie again, and then if B wins and then A wins, we're back to a tie again. So, as long as A and B keep trading points back and forth and getting to points of the tie, the game will still be tied. But as soon as we have a, A after a tie, or B, B after a tie, then that's when the game ends. Let T sub N denote the number of ways the game can be tied N points later. So you're, you're currently at a tie, and you want to know how many ways can the game be played so that it's tied N points later. And let's find a recursive formula for T sub N. In this case, maybe we'll start at the beginning. What about uh, T sub 2? Can I get a sense? T sub 2 is 
2, since the pattern of winds after the initial tie are either A, B, or B, A. And that's the only way that the game can be tied two points later. What about T sub 4? So four points after the tie. How many ways can the game be played so that we still have a tie four points later? A, B, A, B, or A, B, B, A, or B, A, A, B, or B, A, B, A. So those are the only four possible possibilities. Oh, and also notice that if n is odd, then t sub n equals zero. We can't be tied an odd number of points later. All right, so I think we're about ready. Let's say that n points are played, and the game remains tied. The first two of these points must be either a, b, or b, a, because if the game is tied n points later, well then, after the first two points, it must have been tied also. What is our recursive formula for t sub n? Well, let's see. The first two have to be a, b, or b, a. But then I have n minus 2 remaining. So I have two choices for those first two points. And then for the next n minus 2 points, how many choices do I have to fill those in? How about t sub n minus 2? So there we go. Our recursive formula is t sub n is 2 times t sub n minus 2. And our base conditions are that t sub 1 is 0 and t sub 2 is 2. One last great idea, the fruit bag unordered list problem. Suppose that f sub nk denotes the number of ways to fill a bag with n pieces of fruit if k types of fruit are available. Now, we know an actual formula for this. The formula, do you remember, <laughs> is n plus k minus 1, choose k minus 1. But for us, for this problem, let's just be a little bit easy on ourselves and call this thing f sub n k. So what is a recursive formula for this thing? Well, let's call the types of fruit, type 1, type 2, all the way up through type k. We have k types of fruit. And we'll play this game again, where we think either the bag contains a piece of fruit of type 1, or it doesn't. So find the recurrence relation. How many ways are there to fill the bag if you must include a fruit of type 1? And how many ways are there to fill the bag if you must not contain a piece of fruit of type 1? All right, pause the video, try this for a little bit, and then play the video again when you are ready to check your work. Let's take a look. So it turns out that the solution is f sub n minus 1 k plus f sub n k minus 1. So that first expression, that's uh, the number of ways that the bag can contain a piece of fruit of type 1. And the second expression, that's the number of ways that the bag can not contain a piece of fruit of type 1. And for what it's worth, our initial conditions, our base conditions in this problem are, uh, are those two. All right, so I hope that makes sense. I hope you were able to figure that out. Uh, this ends section 5.5 on recursion in counting.